Anti-estrogens in bodybuilding, part three, tamoxifen. This is another classic anti-estrogen that's been used by the bodybuilding community and men that are using anabolic androgenic steroids for many years, actually since the 1990s. The utility of this drug is more focused than the other drugs. This is specifically for on-cycle or PCT gynecomastia and specifically as a regimen with other drugs for post-cycle therapy. The drugs that are obviously used with this are classic estrogenic anabolic androgenic steroids like esters of testosterone and drugs like Dynabol and Anadrol but it's used with many other steroids as men use steroids together in stacks. So it's also interesting that unlike aromatase inhibitors, anti-aging clinics really don't use this drug so much. Although I do see it used from time to time. And I think over time, we see more polypharmacy coming out of these clinics. And I do see men getting put on this drug inappropriately. History of tamoxifen, first synthesized by ICI Pharmaceuticals in 1962, was cleared by the FDA in the mid 60s initially for female infertility. Now, this is interesting because this is a serum like clomiphene that now today is much stronger for that utility. After many years in study, by 1977, the FDA cleared this drug for what it's used for today, medically, which is hormone receptor positive breast cancer. In 1998, the FDA gave it a second clearance for breast cancer prevention in high-risk individuals. That would be a woman or a man that has breast cancer unilaterally, and they want to protect against having breast cancer in the second breast also used classically in more commonly women that have breast cancer risks, familiar risks, and classically genetic risks with the classic gene BRCA1 and 2. The mechanism of action of tamoxifen. It's a classic and the oldest non-steroidal anti-estrogen drugs in a class called selective estrogen receptor modulators. This specific drug falls under the triphenylethylene family. And as the serums do, it has both estrogenic agonistic and estrogenic antagonistic blocking effects, depending on what receptor and what part of the body system we're looking at. So for an example, properties of anti-estrogenic. You would classically see the blocking effects at the estrogen site of breast tissue where we see breast cancer. That's a very strong blocking effect in that point, in that part of the body. Also in the CNS, like clomiphene, you also see the blocking of the hypothalamus and you see a reflex increase in FSH and LH. Again, like clomiphene, but definitely not as strong in this effect as clomiphene. As far as pro-estrogenic effects in the body, we know medically and classically for decades, it is going to have positive effects estrogenic-like in the liver. And it's very interesting that, and I'll discuss later, the effects on cholesterol and classically the HDL. Also in the liver and throughout the body, it's thought that this drug is a pro-estrogen can be hypercoagulable, leading to DVTs, pulmonary embolisms, and strokes. This is very interesting and needs to be paid attention to. Also, as a pro-estrogen is in the bones, and there are other and more specific classes of serums 
that are used for postmenopausal women classically that have osteopenia and osteoporosis or they want prevention. Medical uses for tamoxifen as per the FDA. Hormone receptor positive breast cancer. It's interesting that this was the first drug that was used. And then a decade or so later came anastrozole, aromatase inhibitors. And there's been substantial reports and studies showing that for most women, anastrozole, aromatase inhibition, is actually better and more protective for treating breast cancer. But this is still a patient per patient decision how to use tamoxifen versus aromatase inhibitors for a woman or rarely a man with breast cancer. The FDA, as I stated prior, is also given this medica medication, tamoxifen, a clearance for prevention of potential breast cancer in a person that has high risk. Now, off-label use of this drug by the FDA, and doctors do use it for decades, is nostalgia, which is actually used more for women, and it's breast pain. So the sensitivity and breast pain. Now, this is where we see it used off-label in the bodybuilding world for gynecomastia, because essentially, nostalgia in women is hormone-related. It's kind of exacerbated or equal to analog of gynecomastia for men. It's also used off-label for infertility for women and ovulation cycle issues. Now, it's amazing that I said initially this was the first indication in the 1960s, and then that dropped and it was supplanted where you see it used for breast cancer. Now, how tamoxifen is used by bodybuilders and classically with anabolic steroid using men. It's used for gynecomastia. Now, the gynecomastia use for this drug, and it's amazing that this, these men have learned this just in the streets anecdotally for years, it's used on cycle. And it's used different, much differently than aromatase inhibitors because it's blocking the receptor cell site. It's not blocking systemically the conversion, aromatization of androgens to estrogens. This is classic. It needs to be differentiated. So it's used and it does work. Men use this for years when they're using other types of drugs, estrogenic, non-estrogenic steroids. They'll use this for symptoms of gynecomastia, not to mention physical lumps, which I think is too aggressive. And we'll see why. So it is sustainable, but the problem becomes that the untoed side effects and the use of all the other polypharmacy, you don't see bodybuilders and men using this in the steroid community for too long. They, they just don't stay on it very much too long, unlike aromatase inhibitors. Also classically used in the underground, anecdotally, the most classic is post-cycle therapy. This is the classic use with the dual serums, which is used with clomiphene and this drug tamoxifen and human chorionic gonadotropin. Now it's interesting in the classic regimen, this antiestrogen is the longest used. You'll see clomiphene is on board, you'll see HCG is on board, but it's classic that as those are used initially to jumpstart and to bring back that hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis failure, really heating the testicles and tickling the brain to increase the endogenous FSH and LH and to bring back the testicles. This is used. Now, over time, there's a step-down approach and it's been classically thought that Tamoxifen stays on board longer, up to 45 days, because it's a softer agent versus clomiphene. And I actually agree with that. And it's interesting that you'll see in my rationale for use that this drug can be used with other drugs for PCT, again, medically legitimate PCT, and or as a sole agent. Side effects of tamoxifen most importantly. And this comes from the FDA. I'll compare and contrast. 
the FDA says severe side effects of this drug are strokes, DVTs and pulmonary embolism, that's a hypercoagulable state and developing clots classically in the lower limbs that can go up into the lungs. It's called a pulmonary embolism. It can be very deadly. Visual disturbances and retinal thrombosis. Interesting that we see this also potentially with clomiphene. Leg cramps. And we see abnormalities on labs. LFTs, triglyceride elevations, and abnormal CBCs, which will be classically the white blood cells and platelets. Also, they say malaise and fatigue, myalgias, which is achiness of the body, bone pain, depression, anxiety, and headaches. Now, the side effects that I see contrasting or comparing is from men from the streets, from, from anecdotal men that are using these drugs with multiple other drugs. So there's so much polypharmacy going on. I see classically, I've seen DVTs and pulmonary embolisms. Now, you have to understand that there's so much going on medically with each man that if he has a hypercoagulable family history himself, or he doesn't know, but he's hypercoagulable as far as genetics, and he's on other steroids, which steroids themselves can lead to hypercoagulable states, and then you start adding in other drugs like this drug, you, you'll see DVTs classically. I've seen many, many DVTs, and when I take a good history, I turn out to find that I can't always determine was it exactly after tamoxifen was on or was it related to another drug. But we have to bring attention to this because I think it is true. This drug definitely can perturb a man that's hypercoagulable and lead to DVTs and worse strokes and pulmonary embolisms. I definitely see myalgias and cramps, cramps and muscle cramps in the lower legs and the calves classically and men tell me directly after using this drug for a period of time. And then the CNS effects, and, and these are general, depression, anxiety, and other issues of malaise. Now these are just CNS effects, and again, it's hard to tease out from the polypharmacy from the other drugs, but I think it really does affect, and it's gonna have effects because it's modulating estrogen. It's modulating differently across the board in different systems in the body. Now, my use, when I use this drug appropriately for a limited period in time, I see myalgias, some cramps, and I see CNS effects, as I said, some depression, some worsening of anxiety. I have fortunately never seen DVTs, strokes, or pulmonary embolisms. And I think in part, I've been lucky but I also think mainly it's because I use it for a very short time period for the men and I watch them very closely. Now, side effects continued. We have to discuss the amazing clinical effect in the streets and anecdotes that tamoxifen is safer alternative and as an anti-estrogen than aromatase inhibitors as far as HDL cholesterol. Now, first off, I think it's true. There's no studies on this but I think it's true, it's softer on the HDL. But of course, there's polypharmacy, men are on steroids, testosterone even is gonna lower a man, uh, his HDL, and a man that has a family history for coronary disease, he's maybe had coronary artery disease, you have to be very careful with all these drugs together. But I think it is true, it's a softer alternative because it definitely does not destroy the HDL panel as much as aromatase inhibitors, but it definitely, we need to study this. And for today, it has to be of concern. Rationale for use and how this drug can be used with men that are using anabolic steroids is number one, gynecomastia. Okay, it can be used on men that are on TRT and even suffering with steroids. The effects of this drug do block the initial phases of gynecomastia before there's a physical lump. And it's just sensational gynecomastia that men on TRT coming off of steroids or just an organic man on TRT can use this drug for a limited time period, very limited time period, because if you do it for a week or two, maybe up to two weeks, you'll see that it does block those effects and then it's a restart, it's a restart. And then he goes, he stays on his TRT and the sensational gynecomastia goes away. 
again, you have to be very, very careful for not doing too many rounds of this because of the side effects. And at a certain point, if he has gynecomastia, more physical gynecomastia, you have to refer him uh, for a plastic surgeon's evaluation. You have to be careful with these men. You can never give this drug to a man who has a hypercoagulable state with a past history of DVT, pulmonary embolism, embolism, or a stroke. Or if he has a heavy family history of these things, please, you cannot use this drug. I would not use it. And it is interesting that this, again, has to be differentiated, that it's not a systemic aromatized inhibitor. You're not going to block aromatization with this drug systemically. So please don't stay on this drug too long. It's not used. It should not be used for that reason. And that's where the side effects will come. While a man's on this, he should be monitored physically and also CBC and a comprehensive metabolic panel should be monitored. Also a lipid panel. Continuation for rationale for use. This is classically used appropriately with many physicians have supported this in evidence-based documents for PCT, post-cycle therapy, classically used to get men off steroids, classically used with a dual selective estrogen receptor modulator regimen as it's used with clomiphene. We add it to human chorionic gonadotropin. It definitely can work. I've done this for hundreds, if not thousands of men to safely and effectively care for them as we wean them off and bring back their brain to their testicles in wellness and see how they feel. It does work. Doctors, you should look at the data and you should do this or refer them to an expert that knows how to do this confidently. Don't just tell a man on steroids to leave the office and get off anabolic steroids. Please don't do this. It's very dangerous. It's interesting that in PCT, it can be used as that agent that's used with other drugs. It can also be used alone. We found out that men that have been prior exposed in their central nervous systems to steroids, they don't do well in the post period just on clomiphene. Depression can, really, can happen and it can be quite pronounced. This drug, I found, men can do better by itself as they may have anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism, and they don't want to be put on esters of testosterone. They want to give themselves a chance to see if they recover. This drug, again, monitored closely, a man can do well versus clomiphene. They can live on this for a while. They can do rounds of this on and off, very closely monitored, because it does increase endogenous antigens on a man but it's not as strong as clomiphene. Again, these drugs that I'm discussing, this is all anecdotal, although there are some research studies that are coming up and I commend those physicians. These drugs are very powerful and they're quite old and we know they have side effects. These are complicated drugs. You need to use these under a physician's supervision and to be monitored. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.